Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror anthology film. Urban Myths, Tooth Worms, spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The first story, titled Tummel, begins with a suspicious man named Shady who is being approached by a cop in his car. The cop asks Shady for his license and places his hand on his windshield. He mentions the recent rise in missing animals. The tension grows, but eventually, Shady is allowed to leave. Shady drives away and declares to his friend that he ran over a deer, which was why he was so nervous in front of the car. Suddenly, Shady sees a deer in the front and stops the car. His hallucinations continue when he sees handprints showing up all over his windows, so he steps out and opens his car boot. Shady is actually carrying a girl's dead body, not a deer, and he chops off some hair that's visible outside the bag. Shady continues his ride but hallucinates further and panics. He stops the car inside a tunnel and smashes the dead body. However, the body is missing, and then Shady suddenly spots it inside one of the electrical boxes. Panicked and confused, Shady crawls away as the dead girl comes back to life. He gets inside his car, but finds the dead girl sitting behind him. Now, she brutally assassinates Shady with his own hammer. The second story, The Woman in Red, shows a funeral home where a bully girl talks about the death of a timid girl who had killed herself. It turns out she used to harass the girl. Later, bully girl spots a mysterious lady in red in the parking lot and walks away feeling creeped out. Now she goes to her new neighbor and asks her about this woman. The neighbor doesn't seem to know anything about her, and then she shuts the door. Suddenly, the woman in red shows up, flexing her red body, so bully girl runs back into her apartment. She looks outside her peephole and is jump scared by a woman. This seemingly turns out to be a dream, as she is woken up by a phone call from her boss, who asked her to work. Bully girl is curious, so she pulls out her yearbook and wonders if the red lady is someone she bullied before. On her way to work, she spots the red lady again and tries to confront her, but she gets scared when the ghost disappears in front of her eyes. Later, she gets into the lift, but keeps running into the red lady on every single floor. She runs away, feeling scared and confused, but she's unable to escape. The red lady vanishes for a bit, so Cutie rushes down and out of her building. Unfortunately, she is caught and dragged up the wall by the red lady, who finally reveals that she's actually the girl she bullied and is now taking revenge for bullying her. The red lady drops bully girl to the floor, ending her bully life. The third story, titled Toothworms, begins with a young dentist checking out a patient's cavities. He's suddenly asked to check out another patient, who claims to be in a lot of pain. However, dentist can't spot anything odd about him. After work, dentist notices something stuck inside his sink and picks up a parasite. It turns out that his patient actually has this parasite stuck deep inside his roots. Dentist goes to a senior doctor to talk about this, but even he's shocked to see a parasite in a country with a proper water system. Now, Dentist studies parasites, but comes across a story about tooth worms. It's mentioned that these tooth worms can possess their victims, and it scares Dentist. Suddenly, he gets a call from his nurse, informing him about the same patient showing up for an operation. Dentist feels uneasy about this, but he decides to go ahead with the operation anyway. He begins the surgery, but he's nervous, and his hands shake uncontrollably. After a tense moment, Dentist manages to pull out the parasite, but it causes his patient to shake rapidly as he gets possessed by the toothworm. The patient turns into a zombie and attacks Dentist, peeling off his flesh but not pulling out his teeth. Dentist drops to the floor, and the zombie attacks his nurse as well. Dentist takes his chance to run away, but fears that he might also be infected with the toothworm. He tries to rip open his gums, but gets distracted when he sees his nurse turning into a zombie. It's too late for Dentist as the toothworm takes over and causes him to shake rapidly, after which he also becomes a zombie who can fix teeth. The fourth story, titled Necromancy, begins with a girl named Jealous cutting the nails of her friend named Tattoo. Once they are done cutting each other's nails, Jealous says that she envies the scar on Tattoo's arm because it looks like a heart tattoo. The girls toy with each other, even sharing what looks like a kiss. However, Jealous vanishes from school and doesn't even respond to Tattoo's texts. It's believed that Jealous has killed herself, and then Tattoo remembers a blood pact she had made with Jealous, stating that if one of them died first, the other would bring them back to life. Tattoo meets her teacher, who suspects that she and Jealous were dating. This makes Tattoo angry, so she walks away from the teacher. At night, Tattoo goes to her locker and takes out a heart box, filled with pictures of her and Jealous. She becomes emotional as she thinks back to the time they took pictures together. Now, Tattoo opens up her diary to read the promise, which requires her to use necromancy to bring Jealous back to life. She pulls out a two-headed doll and performs a hide-and-seek ritual. 
She then pokes herself, and this reminds her of the time she scolded Jealous for sucking on her finger in front of their other classmates. Now, Tattoo asks Jealous to find her, and runs to hide. However, the lights start to flicker, and then Jealous seemingly shows up. Tattoo approaches her, but she suddenly vanishes. Tattoo reads her diary again, but spots a torn out page that explains how Jealous has to eat Tattoo's flesh to complete her resurrection. Jealous shows up, turns into a monster, and eats Tattoo, including her smelly part. With both the girls formed into one, Jealous looks at her arm, and it's revealed that she had planned her suicide right from the start in order to get Tattoo's scar. Jealous looks into the mirror and talks to Tattoo, whose soul now resides within her body. The fifth story titled The Wall begins with a young man named Newbie, who has just finished settling into his new apartment. He hears a weird noise coming from the wall and gets annoyed, so he bangs on it, hoping to silence the hormone yoga going on the other side, but it's of no use. The next day, Newbie gets into the lift and is joined by a girl, who reveals that she's Newbie's new neighbor. Newbie wants to ask her about the hormone noises she was making the previous night, but doesn't go ahead with it. The girl drops her smelly handkerchief, and Newbie picks it up, hoping to return it to her later. At night, Newbie is disturbed by the noises once more, and starts talking through the wall in Morse code, thinking that the girl is on the other side. After an anxious chat, Newbie asks her out on a date, and gets a knock of approval. The next day, Newbie meets the girl, and uses the knocking gesture to remind her of their chat, but she doesn't respond to it. Later, Newbie gets stood up on his date, so he goes back home, and tries to talk to the girl through the wall. She doesn't respond, so Newbie goes to her house, using her fallen handkerchief as an excuse to get inside. The door opens, and Newbie enters the place, but doesn't find anyone there. He notices a mysterious compartment, along with a newspaper that talks about a missing newly couple. Newbie goes back to his place, rips open his wall, only to find two bodies wrapped in tape. He goes to check whether the bodies are dead, but one of them moves their fingers. Newbie tries to escape in fear. However, the house breaks down, and a mysterious force suddenly chokes Newbie midair, while everything else falls apart. The sixth story, titled The Closet, begins with a broke girl checking out some closets on a shopping app. She finds a closet that's being given away for free. Broke calls up the seller to arrange a meeting, so that she can check the closet. At night, she meets the seller, who feels shy to invite her inside his house, because it's late. Broke says it's fine, and checks out the closet, which is shown to be quite big. The seller says that he can't fit it inside his house, so he's giving it away for free. Broke notices the seller peeping at her sexy body like a creep, so she tells him to send the closet to her, and leaves quickly. Broke receives the delivery the next day, but her friend recognizes the closet and calls the seller weird. Broke ignores his words and fits the closet into her home. She notices that the closet's doors don't shut properly, but she goes to sleep regardless. Suddenly, Broke is caught and massaged by creepy ghost cans, but this seemingly turns out to be a dream. Broke notices the closet doors are open again and quietly shuts them. She tells her friend about this, but he thinks that it's sleep paralysis. Broke maintains that there was a ghost, so her friend tells her to use a red bean bag to remove bad luck from the closet. This doesn't work at all, because the ghost snatches away Broke's blanket at night. She inspects the room, and eventually finds a hidden area inside the closet. Suddenly, the seller reveals himself as the ghost, who was haunting Broke all this time. He tries to assault her, but she manages to stab him multiple times, and then she hides in her bathroom. The seller gets back up, and tries to stab Broke through the door, while she calls the cops. When it gets quiet, she goes out of the bathroom and sits on her bed, but gets dragged underneath it by the seller. In the seventh story, titled Ghost Marriage, a charming boy named Charm gets interviewed by a boss lady at a company where his friend works. Charm gets hired easily, so he tells his friend about it. However, his friend warns him that a shaman is haunting the company after the accidental death of the chairman's daughter. Charm doesn't think much of it and goes for a shower. There, a ghost lady touches his hormone radiant muscles, but disappears soon after. She spies on Charm again, while he sleeps, but he doesn't notice her. The next day, Charm starts new work, but seems to attract unwanted attention from the other employees. He accidentally cuts himself, so Boss Lady seals his wound and sends him to an archive room to arrange some files. There, Charm finds his candidate profile and spots something wrong with the requirements. Boss Lady catches him in the act and orders him to continue with his work. Later, Boss Lady talks to her team about preparing Charm to meet someone, but gets overheard by Charm's friend. Later, he calls Charm to warn him about Boss Lady, but he ignores his bullshit. At night, a ritual ceremony takes place while Charm sleeps, and this paralyzes him. It allows the Ghost Lady to transport him to a wedding ceremony, where Boss Lady and her team are also in attendance. It turns out Charm has been chosen as a marriage candidate for the Ghost Lady, who used to be the CEO's daughter. 
The eighth story titled The Girl in the Mirror begins with a beauty influencer who sucks at her sales job. This makes her salty, so she decides to ignore her other clients. She doesn't care because she has her social media to pay for her expenses. She is shown to be a jerk as she insults other women on Instagram with fake accounts and even judges other women around her. Suddenly, she finds herself surrounded by deadly spirits, and then she spots a demonic reflection of hers in the lift mirror. She quickly runs to her place and uploads a picture to distract herself. It doesn't get any likes, causing her to break down, so she takes a selfie. However, her demon face shows up again, and its deadly hand breaks out of the phone screen to rip off her cheeks. She falls to the ground after being killed, and the last picture on her Instagram turns out to be a demonic selfie. The ninth story titled Mannequin begins with a trainee worker at a mannequin warehouse. His mentor talks about the mannequin urban legend, but trainee doesn't want to listen to the story. Suddenly, trainee gets creeped out when he spots a mannequin in a twisted yoga pose. Mentor tells him that it's just a standard mannequin, but Trainee doesn't recall moving it, so he gets out of the warehouse. However, the twisted mannequin moves its head to look at Trainee. On his way home, Trainee spots a mystery man talking to a cursed mannequin. He panics and runs back home. He does some research on the mannequin urban legend and learns that he shouldn't make eye contact with the cursed mannequin. The next day, Trainee talks to his mentor about the mannequin urban legend. They open the warehouse, but get jump scared by the twisted mannequin, so they run away. Now Trainee bumps into the haunted mannequin again and accidentally makes eye contact, so he runs away into a tunnel. After a fast and furious chase, Trainee gets blocked off by more mannequins. The haunted mannequin creeps up on him, so he pushes it away and seemingly kills it. However, he starts turning into a mannequin himself, and that's when the mystery man shows up, saying that his new toy is just in his liking. The final story, titled Escape Games, begins with a group of influencer friends setting a new high score in an escape room. They are approached by a sponsor, who asks them to get out of a maze in exchange for $10,000. The team accepts the terms and makes its way to the challenge. After talking to the sponsor, they get their first clue and enter a library maze. Suddenly, a dead body falls in front of them, but they think it's a fake and move on. However, this body reawakens as a zombie. The team splits up to cover more ground and come across all kinds of clues. One of the members gets injured in the process, but decides to carry on because of the prize money. The team finds a key and makes its way through to the next room, which is an art gallery. They accidentally push a button, causing two of them to be put inside a cage. Luckily, the final team member manages to get another key after solving a clue. Unfortunately, this key leads to another room, so the surviving member ventures into it. Suddenly, he finds the zombies of his friends and eventually gets trapped under all their bodies. The movie ends with a title stating the escape has failed. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.